Welcome to the store. We're at our Sherway store. Gardens? Yes, we are at Fairway Gardens, and um, it's, uh, you know, I wish you could see it in real life, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so are you able to uh, take your phone and uh, give us a tour maybe later? Sure, sure. It's a little, uh, you know, we've been, thankfully, we've been selling a lot online, so we've been pulling here and there. Not yeah. like and, and, and like for tonight's, for tonight's uh, this evening's IG Live, you asked all the customers to kindly leave the store so that you'd have the space. Exactly. Um, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Oh, look, here's your, here's your favorite shoe. Oh, yeah. That's so my favorite is... summertime shoe. Exactly. It's uh, one <laughs> of our best sellers still, honestly. That, that, that pair is uh very light for the summer it's got a great sort of like white uh, you know deep sole on the side so it's you can wear like white, tees, white summer pants and and of course uh your your navy blue detail which is great with jeans right so i love those shoes that's good no it's one of our best sellers and i don't actually know if you've ever seen it in the full navy but you oh, oh, I see that. very nice <laughs> how many different uh models do you have uh on the floor right now <sighs> Uh, Glenn, when we came in here, my dad gave me like, I think 160 wow. shoes and I had 24 hours to merchandise. I had 24 hours, my brother helped, of course, but um, yeah. uh, it was a fact. Yeah, I, like I like the fact that uh, Park City Boots offers uh, summer and winter at the same time. So, you know, back in the old days when we used to travel, it'd be very convenient because you could actually pick up a fresh pair before you hit uh, some some warm summer climates. Exactly. Um, yeah. And this is the gauge boot that you're interested in now. The sneaker with the zipper. That's amazing. Those are great. I love those. And we actually have it winterized as well, going back to that winter thing. Yeah, with the fake fur in the interior, uh, inside, right? Yeah. There we yeah. go. Yeah, look at that. Big seller for us. And then obviously the winter Sable Island boots have been like fully waterproof. And it's a handsome boot. Like it's not yeah. like a clunky winter boot like most people. It's like in the past when we didn't have all these options and choices, we had to decide whether or not we wanted to dress for the below zero frigid temperatures yep. or uh, wear a pair that looks good. Now we can do both, right? Exactly. And that's our and, and, you know, being comfortable and stylish uh, together is just so nice. And I think in the men's industry, it's a huge like trend now, right? Mm. So I'm so happy to see you. It was so nice to get dressed up today. <laughs> so how does it work? I mean, where you, you, you just, you can go to your store anytime and open yep. the door and go in and it's exactly. just not, it's just not open to customers. It's the entire mall is not open. I mean, you can go to the shoppers, drug mart and lens crafters, I believe. But other than that, you um, uh, have to do curbside pickup at the designated door. But then there's also, they've started a new thing. You know, in the middle of the there's that, the, the square. So they have like nine numbers on it, and so when it was walking by, it was kind of like the walking dead. People are just standing on their number, like waiting for someone to come and bring them. It was really weird because it's kind of dark in here, and I was like... <laughs> so people can go on your website, uh, order, and go to Sherway to pick up themselves? We can do pick up, but we always do free shipping, so we appreciate working for our factory here in Toronto and just cutting out the middleman and that way also you know less contact I guess right which everybody's trying to okay so, so uh, I know you have a loyal um, customer base mm -hmm. uh, but what, and they know their size and when they're ordering they know what they're getting uh, but what about new customers who may get maybe because you what's good also is you offer half sizes uh, maybe maybe they order online and it's not you know, fitting perfectly and they want to exchange. A lot of stores are not accepting exchanges right now because you can't go to the store, right? Yeah. So how is that working with, with you? You know, it's funny. Usually that's a big problem and we're always shipping and like shipping back in here. But honestly, I'm pretty sure we've had maybe only one or two cases of it, which is really low. So I don't know if people are just like, I don't know. 
they have more time maybe so maybe doing more research we're pretty true to size so i don't know if that's hopefully a thing too but yeah no it's good i know that's, my side that's, that's right that's right um, you have to stop asking the questions i'm here i'm wearing the chelsea's did you, oh, you okay. carry the sway the black weather that's right yeah, yeah. Keep up. good staple yeah nice chelsea boot the chelsea boot it's so funny i love being here at shoreway because i find you know we're in the west end kind of etobicoke and i feel like a lot of men that come in here they were a little bit nervous or like a lot you know i don't know if the chelsea boot is more of a downtown kind of thing people here were a little bit more nervous to approach the style so and then once you try on a Chelsea boot, it is like a slipper, right? Like yeah, it's, exactly. It's easy on, easy off. I mean, it's very convenient. So know? we make a lot of Chelsea boot customers in the last yeah. little uh, while here at Sherway. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you some questions because I know you're always the one asking. <laughs> <laughs> Even this evening with you, I'm asking a lot of questions. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's usually I say when like you know I've got a fancy cocktail and then we're at a fancy party and there's like lights and oh good for you I I'm at the mall I don't think I'm allowed to drink here unfortunately. <laughs> Listen, it, 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 you should have a, a at least a bottle back in, in the back room there at all times. Where we stay pretty hydrated here at Park City. <laughs> Um, you know, I know you have a lot of uh, VIP customers, a lot of Raptors. Uh, you're very tied in, tied into the Toronto Raptors. Uh, when they come to the store, do they like uh, you serve them a drink back there? We we give them the whole VIP experience. What's the, what's the what's the drink of choice? Well, I would say shout out to our favorite local brewery here, Great Lakes Brewery, and they actually announced today that they're opening a brew pub in the area. Well, you know, East Brewery, I guess, but um. They're launching a, a new brew pub right on uh, Jarvis, Lower Jarvis, I believe. So oh, we just got a we just got a, a yes from Patrick Reynolds. Uh, <laughs> Maybe Patrick, a TV yeah. uh, um, a favorite uh, here across Canada, right on on City Line. Totally, totally. Personality. Hey, Patrick. Hope you're well. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. You originally were from Montreal, my favorite city, and then um, you came to Toronto for Ryerson, and then um, I'll skip over a few of your like your work things, but then eventually your first on-air job was City Pulse, um, doing entertainment reporting, all that. Before you make the jump to, to fashion, like in fashion reporting, what, how did your style evolve from like Montreal to school to working at Much Music? Yeah, so I, I was, uh, I'm from Montreal. I, I grew up there and a uh, French mom, English dad. I uh, went to uh, elementary school and French high school. And then I switched over to uh, post-secondary in English. And I was studying English literature at Concordia and thought these are great uh, novels and, and great books that I'm reading and talking about. And, uh, but what am I gonna do to earn a living? So then I applied it uh, at, in journalism at Ryerson and I came down and got accepted. And I thought I was only going to get like a degree in journalism and then return to Montreal. But as soon as I got here, I started uh, getting uh, work because of my bilingualism, um, yeah. most specifically over at the French CBC. And uh, within a few months, I was like the morning traffic reporter on French CBC radio. And I, I was sharing a deck with Jim Kern, who was the uh, English uh, CBC traffic reporter for decades. He, he retired a few years ago. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that job led to other jobs, led to, to other jobs. So I ended up staying in Toronto. That was never my plan originally, uh, but it kind of all worked out that way. Before I started working at Much Music in uh, 1991, 92, I was working at uh, the French CBC television, French CBC radio, French TVO. I was co-hosting a youth magazine show there. And then uh, one summer I was working as a producer at YTV and I got a call from City and they, they hired me. I ended up spending 20 years at uh, Queen and John working at 299 Conquest. Um, half of that was as an entertainment reporter for City TV and Much Music. And the other half uh, was um, uh, working at Fashion Television Channel uh, with Jeannie Becker and her team um, fashion television uh, and that was a dream come true because in that building uh, after 10 years of working in the newsroom and doing live television and and uh, I thought I, I needed a change and in that whole building fashion television for me was the 
you know, brand that I admired and respected the most. It was an international brand. The show was seen in over 100 countries. The production value was high. Uh, you know, the team was strong. And, and you know, Jeannie was, was, a, was a star, was a legend here and abroad. Um, even though, to be honest, I never watched the show. <laughs> because the show, the show featured women's wear. And yeah. I, I didn't really have an interest in women's wear. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. Um, but I, I was in love with the actual show, the quality of the show. So uh, the day the CRTC approved the license for the fashion television channel, I was in the boss's office and I said, I'd love to make the leap from the newsroom. And he said, fantastic. And I even pitched him a, a, a men's version of FT. And uh, I remember the Toronto Star did a little blurb on my transition, on my move. Yeah. And uh, they were ahead of themselves and they said that I was going to host a show for men, uh, a fashion, a men's version of fashion television. Right. And it was called, it was going to be called Glenn for Men. <laughs> yeah. So I if, I ever, if I ever launch a podcast or something, it's that's great. <laughs> anyway, I, I didn't get Glenn for Men. That never happened. But uh, I did get a show called In Fashion, which I hosted for 10 years. And um, I basically used that show to cover menswear as much as I could. And mm -hmm. that kind of separated what I was doing with what Jeannie was doing on fashion television because they never uh, did anything men related or, or men's fashion related. So mm -hmm. I would, you know, menswear, male models, uh, you know, automotive design, anything to do, I think, with, um, you know, with, with men's fashion. Sure. Um, and, and then I started going to Milan Fashion Week and covering. So it kind of grew and expanded. Awesome. But And the other thing, too, that I think separated in fashion with fashion television is we have no budget. So we either had to find a way to, to get there, uh, you know, free, sponsored, yeah. or, uh, and most of the time we were kind of shooting here in Toronto and in Montreal and elsewhere in Canada, we were local. So that benefited the Canadian fashion industry oh, tremendously yeah. because we were uh, now putting the spotlight on local designers uh, mm -hmm. out of necessity, but uh, and then we, that kind of, you know, uh, gave a boost to, to the, the, the fashion industry here, and it helped to elevate the profiles of, of a lot of talented uh, designers. It did. You guys put so many designers on the map. And like for me growing up, um, I went to fashion school in Montreal and um, you were like, you know, and then I was a Toronto girl and I always saw you everywhere in the city. And it was always such a highlight to see you in person because I, I would, I remember taping uh, fashion television on like VHS, <laughs> like on city TV and like watching it. So it was, it was such an amazing show. And so how did your style of your personal style go from, you know, say, like, yes, you didn't care about women's hair, but then you did have to count, like, you know, it must have had some influence on you. I mean, not the women's, but I just mean like fashion. Um, well, yeah. So, so uh, I remember um, arriving at much music and I had a ponytail. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It was like her very early nineties, like 1991. Yeah. And There's I had no photos of you with your your the hair. I loved it. I think I had, I had no money. I had no wardrobe. I had uh, no clue, basically. Uh, but you know, for me, this was like a huge um, vehicle. Like much music was it, and uh, and it's a visual medium. So I thought, okay, I gotta do something. So, but very quickly, I had the support of a of a of a store on Bel Air in Yorkville here in Toronto called Uncle Otis. And oh. the, yeah, the owner was the keyboardist with The Cure, with Robert Smith and The Cure, the yeah. East East tour, uh, so a, a British guy. And he uh, supported me with uh, uh, vintage Pumas and with Stussy and Hang Ten and <laughs> kind of all worked with, uh, with my look at the time with the ponytail. But then something uh, happened very quickly. Um, I was covering a indie car race event. Uh, you know, you'd appreciate this at the... Uh, the um, president of Hugo Boss Canada's home in Forest Hill. And it was a daytime weekend pool party and Paul Tracy was there and other drivers. They had a mariachi band, but I did something that was kind of smart in the end is on my way out with the city TV cameraman. I introduced myself to the Hugo Boss employee who had the guest list and I said, you know, I'd like to possibly talk to you about a clothing deal. Make a long story short, a year later they called me in and they were uh, launching uh, their red label because at the time, Boss, Hugo Boss was only one label. It was the black Boss label that uh, we're most familiar with. This is before they had women's wear, before Hugo, before the orange label, and, and all this other stuff that they now have. Uh, 
Um, so they brought me in and said, you know, they started throwing these outfits on a boardroom table and, you know, was kind of like getting overwhelmed and excited about, about the, 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 you know, the clothes. Yep. Long story short, we struck a deal. I got rid of the, uh, <laughs> I went to a whole makeover and the clothing uh, deal lasted 20 years. I was going to so say, 20, you, just, yeah. you still so have that, a relation with you so, a lot, so anywhere. Yeah, so to answer your question, my sort of appreciation and love of fashion really began uh, with uh, getting some of the finest clothes from, from Hugo Boss, especially in the early years, because as you know, when you're launching a new label, uh, a new brand, it takes a, a, a while for it to develop and find its own, right? Yeah. So at the beginning, I mean, it was really fast, or, or not fast, but uh, fashion forward uh, clothing. Like it was it was runway uh, clothing, like three quarter length jackets, you know? Yeah. Um, so so uh, so so that's it. And then I would meet the the German head designer. And they'd fly me to New York, and he'd kind of dress me. And I'd, so it's season after season, and it's that that's how because uh, I wasn't working in fashion at the time. I was covering yeah. arts and entertainment for City and for Much. But I think that's where uh, my love and appreciation for fashion really began. I feel like when I go back to my memories of you, you always, you always, if you, if I like was to see you in the streets of Toronto, you always have a gorgeous peacoat, a nice scarf, you know. It, like I feel like you, I could always spot you like lost somewhere around <laughs> in John, like obviously. Yeah. I remember uh, uh, the Toronto Star, uh, I think it was in 2001, they started their uh, best dress list. Yeah. And uh, I made the cut on the first year. The, the yeah, top, you've uh, been on several dress, uh, best dress lists in your career. Yeah, but it was a funny thing too, I, a quick story about that. So uh, so I find out that uh, I've been, you know, honored by the Toronto Star, their best dress list with some really serious uh, uh, fashion people, including someone I admired very much, uh, Tu Lee, who's now in Montreal with, uh, with Moose Knuckle as the head designer for Moose Knuckle, but he was part of, of the, the 10 best dress at the time. So they send over um, a photographer from the Toronto Star to uh, Much Music to take uh, photographs of him. So he's got a beautiful, you know, uh, white backdrop that he sets up, he sets his camera and the lighting. And I mentioned it to Hugo Boss, so they're excited because they're my uh, clothing sponsor. So they sent me a whole outfit for, for the occasion, right? A new pair of shoes and pants, and long jacket, shirt, t-shirt, everything. So I'm, I'm styling, I go in the room, photo sash, boom. The, uh, the paper comes out and they didn't use that picture. Oh. Do you remember Fashion Cares, the annual fundraiser for oh, the yeah. HCD? No? Yeah. It was yeah. by far, right, Canada's premier yeah. extravagant like it was extravagant know, huge 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 event raised millions of dollars for for act the ace community of toronto i mean yeah. lionel richie katie perry yeah. uh linda evangelista hosted paul hosted i mean they had a-list celebrities the 25th anniversary featured elton john um so every year they'd have a theme casino bollywood one year it was garden so hugo mm -hmm. boss had this white suit well they had a whole line like shirts and that were white with hand painted neon floral. Oh yes. On white neon floral, like we're talking yeah. pinks and greens and yellow neon colors that were hand painted on the white suit. So of course I wore that because it, it it blended well with the uh, that year's theme and it it's really like an over the top uh, uh, fashion event and costume party. So so that's what I wore. Mm -hmm. That's the picture that Toronto Star published instead of that beautiful outfit I had for the photo session with their professional photographer. Someone took a picture of me at that event. And of course, Toronto Star is going, well, this is great. We're going to put this in. <laughs> you got to picture the, the spread in the paper. Everybody's kind of like, you know, well-dressed and, and it reflects their personal sense of style. I'm wearing this crazy costume and, and outfit and people think, okay, well, that's how he dresses on a Tuesday afternoon. But, uh, but, yeah, but I was uh, honored. That's that's what happens. You're getting, some, you're getting some good comments on screen there. Yeah, I actually um one of my questions was like I loved your lockdown series. You interviewed some of my favorite designers like Philip DeBook. We talked about Moose Knuckle, um, Denis Gagnon, um, Crane. Like so, the question before uh, the one before it was um. Canadian fashion. So besides Park City Boo as a menswear brand, what is going on in menswear Canadian fashion that you'd like to tell us about? Um, what can I say about Well, uh, I think Roger <laughs> Gingrich popped up. And the first thing I think of is Tom. Remember the Toronto um, uh, Men's Fashion Week? 
uh, yes. that's a few years ago and founded by Jeff Rustia. Um, our friends are going to, and, 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 our, and our friends, Hans, used to produce the shows, and, and Roger was uh, part of the, the organizing committee. Yep. Um, I think that event did a lot to boost the careers of Canadian menswear designers in Canada. And I remember going to the first couple of seasons after uh, attending, you know, every Toronto Fashion Week um, yep. uh, show uh, since its inception in the early 2000s and, and thinking, okay, this, this has got a long way to go. Um, but I'm looking back now and, and I didn't fully appreciate it in the first couple of seasons. It, it really did a lot to help these designers who got their launch at that event and who are now still still, uh, still doing their thing and still earning a living um, you know designing which is no easy task yeah. and uh, the one thing I would say with with menswear there's two things that are exciting uh, here in Canada it's uh, streetwear yes. uh, high fashion streetwear or yeah. and genderless unisex gender fluid fashions mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm thinking like Spencer Boudou and Free Trois Paradis, Three Paradis, uh, mm -hmm. getting international attention. Um, and also, uh, I think, you know, custom tailors, bespoke uh, custom tailors who have set up shop um, in Toronto, they have popped up um, in high numbers in the last few years. So mm -hmm. before, I mean, guys had to go to Harry Rosen and Old Red Crew and a couple of, you know, uh, old, you know, octogenarians uh, in, in mm -hmm. uh, remote parts of the city. And, but, but now there's some really young, cool, creative designers um, where you can get something very special and something very original that really can reflect um, who you are. Um, so that, that didn't exist before. So that's a new phenomenon. I'd say bespoke and custom tailors and, and uh, just, you know, high fashion streetwear coming out of, out of Toronto and out of Canada, I think are the, the two things that are exciting in menswear. Yeah. Um, our mutual friend, Thomas Henry Maid, I've seen him a couple times, Tom Caldwell, and uh, I actually did um, social distance yoga with him a couple times this summer at the park with one of our friends, and he was, he's known for making all of his custom suits, and so I was like, what are you making? Because, you know, and he said, I've been doing a lot of shit. <laughs> and so, doing a lot of shirts, like a lot of shirting. Yeah. So kind of Nobody's wearing suits, right? Yeah, yeah, but but he said that people, um, you know, still want the men that need custom or enjoy custom. They still are supporting, and it's so nice to hear that that people are still reaching out and um, yeah, the 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 support for local is so important right now, and yeah. like, we all are so grateful for it. It's true. I think that's one positive thing that has happened. Uh, with the pandemic is our awareness now of the importance of shopping local, of supporting uh, designers and brands that manufacture here, that design here, uh, that have a shop here, that employ here. Um, yes. and, yeah, uh, it, whether it's just buying your masks uh, that are affordable, uh, just buy it from them instead of Nike, I don't know. Like, it's just, there's lots of ways we can, we can support our, our local designers. For sure. And it is important. Now, talking about like uh, gratitude, let's say you've always throughout your whole career um, have been charitable with your time and your skills. You know, your photography, optioning it um, for right to play. You've assisted in galas um, and then uh, even to, you know, posing in your pajamas for Pogo, which I love Pogo as well. Um, so how have you always made time for that and how, why is that important to you? Uh, it's an easy thing, right? Especially when, um, you know, like I, like when I worked at City TV and Much Music and CTV Fashion Television, um, you know, the great thing with having job security and a regular paycheck is it allows you to spend uh, some of your free time doing charitable work, right? Yes. It's harder when, um, you know, you're struggling to make ends meet. Um, when you're trying to find your next gig and your next paycheck, it's harder to give it away. Uh, yeah. But you know, when 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 your basics are covered, then yeah, then by all means, um, spend some time figuring out how you can, you know, do something that mm -hmm. reflects yeah. your brand, your interests, or, and and you know, give back. And it's it's kind of easy. And um, and then you know, then you'll you'll also be able 
once you start, you'll also be able to carry that over for years to come for the rest of your life because you'll have formed relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that community, that network has, you know, their, their mindset in, in doing uh, righteous things and doing charitable work. And then so you maintain that with, with people that you've done it in the past. So it just becomes um, something that is part of your, your world, your, your day to day. For sure. Um, I uh, was reminiscing recently about, um, I remember seeing you on TV with Alex Trebek, and then I've, you know, Jean Paul Gaultier, Car what? yeah, Carl Lagerfeld, I do, I do, like, I remember everything. Do you remember me interviewing Alex Trebek? Yeah, yeah, like, I, I was, yeah, and it, I remember everything. Okay, okay, but very quickly, because obviously, uh, Alex is a, a, you know, a Canadian icon, passed yeah. away uh, not too long ago. And I reminisced of this one time where I got to meet him and interview him. And it was under really bizarre circumstances that would probably never, never, never happen uh, today. And really quickly, it was during TIFF, during the Toronto International Film Festival, uh, before it is what it is today. There was a lot more uh, freedom and flexibility, you know, in the 90s. Uh, it wasn't as studio run and as ran by publicists where everything had to be you know, uh, proved uh, like weeks ahead of time. So long story short, I was at an event and, and he was um, uh, there. And um, I asked if I could interview him on, it was at a, a bar called Indian Motorcycle. And it was like this vintage Indian motorcycles. And we both sat down on this motorcycle and I interviewed him uh, a la Jeopardy, where my questions were in the form of answers. And we kind of edited real show clips with you know, with the music and the gym and with and the the interview that we did sitting together on a motorcycle together. So just I remember thinking that wow, he was a real sport and he was really like trusting and he went along with this yeah. thing. That was probably you know I can't imagine trying to sell that idea to someone today, right? But but yeah, yeah. so it was like, yeah. I'm just surprised. I just read his book and like he just you know you can tell that he. I mean, and when you hear experiences of people like real people that have met him it's, it's honestly the same across the board like he was obviously so my question is is like you know the Rolling Stones and like Carl Lagerfeld and Alex Trebek and we've had so many amazing interviews the gentleman here asked the kind of the question as well what's your best interview who is your greatest interview it's, 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 it's such an impossible question I and I and I've been asked it before and I don't I never I never have a good answer I don't know um there's what about so personal many. like like personally for you and then fashion oh wow there's so many like <laughs> and, and sometimes I, I, I sit and go oh yeah i think i interviewed that person or did that really happen or um you know i don't know there's like there's i don't know there's so many um there's what the the, the carl lagerfeld thing for me sticks out too it wasn't really an interview. It was basically two questions backstage at Fendi in 2005, uh, the, my first time going to Milan Fashion Week. We yeah. were backstage shoot, shooting hair and makeup and uh, you know getting a few interviews, and then he just kind of walked in the room. And then it's like a scrum, right? All these other reporters sticking yeah. their hands before he walks out. Um, and and for, my knees buckled. Like, you know, this was the guy that was on fashion television with the ponytail and the, the fan. And then he, he lost the weight, transformed himself. But the reason why my knees buckled was I had, you know, interviewed rock stars and A-list celebrities and authors and so on. But there's a lot of those. There's only like Karl Lagerfeld was at the, the top of the fashion hierarchy, right? Number one, the most like the guy. But also, he's, you know, celebrity and iconic looking, like you, you recognize him and even people who don't follow fashion, you know, recognize the face. So he had, he had the celebrity and he had the, the importance uh, and, and, you know, and it just kind of like, it was like overwhelming, an overwhelming presence. But I got the, the, the two questions in uh, before it took off. Um, yeah. So, but there's that, but there's like so many interviews. I don't know. Um, yeah. I feel like I remember seeing a really funny interview with, was it Ryan Reynolds? Uh, and, and another thing too, like fashion wise, I never yeah. got to interview him. Okay. Um, but, but the other thing too that, that I think back of is, I, I actually covered the last two shows that um, Alexander McQueen uh, presented. 
Oh, right? wow. so, and it, it doesn't get talked about because he, you know, people focus on his women's wear and his shows that were, you know, multi-million dollar, yeah, yeah. Uh, like pushing the envelope, yeah. um, visually like, you know, innovative and, and over the top and, uh, you know, cerebral. And, but he also did men's wear, which was a little more, uh, you know, understated. Uh, I'm talking about the presentations. Right. Um, and so this was in January, uh, menswear in Milan, and he did a show um, in a small venue. It was an intimate venue, and we got there early. Uh, so there were two back-to-back -back shows to accommodate the guest yeah. list as opposed to one larger show. Yeah. So we, we arrived there. My cameraman and I arrived early, and they let us in. They said, why don't you just shoot the first show? I said, okay. So we go in, we set up the camera, and we shoot the show, and he comes out, does his bow, and then we're, we think, why are we leaving? Let's just stay. Let's just, let's not leave and change the camera angle. And it'll yeah. look like a camera shoot. And we'll just shoot it again. Amazing. And, um, and then we shot, we shot the second show from a different perspective. And that time, the second show, he did come out for a bow for that crowd. And then shortly after, he took his life. And that was his last, you know, wow. his last presentation. Okay. Yeah. But, but that does, yeah. So I'm, I feel privileged to have uh you know seen him and and, and seen his show and i um, remember I the day at school i was in fashion school in montreal in fashion school so it was like the school was like an omen on the school it was very sad but wow that's an amazing experience Scott. that that'll stay with me i, I still have the invitation Got it. Got it. Um, here it is. If people are interested in uh, uh, kings and uh, was it uh, kings and gods uh the, the, it's basically a, a double biography on John Galliano. It's like the rise and fall of John Galliano and Alexander McQueen. It's by Dana Thomas. I highly recommend uh, reading that book. It's if you're interested in fashion and on the lives of two great designers who, who kind of had a, a fall. Uh, although Galliano's back at it with uh, uh, Margiela. And, and, and the documentary, um, the, the Alexander McQueen documentary. Yeah, and and Jeannie's featured a, a few times in that documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny how she does pop up in so many other things. I saw her post the other day about um, Naomi Campbell had done an Instagram post with her and Daisy. And then yeah. the she row, yeah. in the corner behind yeah. Jeannie and Naomi Campbell was like, oh my God. <laughs> One, 27 years of, of, of covering, you know, fashion in Paris and New York. Huge. Yeah, she, She's another one whenever you, and I've met her several times for the first time, always, and uh, she's such a lovely woman. Oh my goodness. Just so, and she always takes time to ask what I'm doing and, and what's going on. So, very cool. I, uh, when was the last time you wore a suit? <laughs> the pandemic question. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, I, like I own 50 suits, 25 summer, 25 winter, and I love wearing a, a well-tailored suit, but there's absolutely no occasion in my life. I, I kind of posted uh, on social media about that and you know everybody was kind of in my boat and sh sharing a similar experience but one guy's going yeah I just bought four suits at Harry Rosen so I kind of forget that there are still some men who go to work who go to the office right now yeah, um, yeah. whereas I think most of us are working from home yes. or you know are waiting for work right because a lot of uh, a, a lot has been canceled delayed pushed back yeah. Um, so, so there's really, and there's no events, obviously, which is uh, when I would kind of, you know, wear a suit. Um, so the last time I did a podcast and it was called Suiting Up, so I had to wear a suit. But other than that, that's it. Yeah. And you know, you know what's funny? I can't, I can't fit in in my suits. I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're laughing with me, right? Not funny. No, no, it's true. I cannot, I cannot wear any of my suits. Because uh, I've gained weight. I've gained, like, was it COVID-15 or what do they call it? COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, COVID-19 pounds. It's, like, bad. And, uh, yeah, I go I go in my closet and I put on a blazer and I can't, I can't button. That's why, that's why I'm wearing what I'm wearing for this. I can't wear any of my suits. And that, and the suits. Laugh more, Banks just launched their men's line this week. I don't know if you saw that. It was a huge yeah. I'm not ready for, for that. Yet I'm not going there, but it, but it's like a, I've never owned a scale. Like I've never weighed myself. I don't know how much I weigh. It was my suits that kept me fit. Just knowing but, you. This is true. This is true. That's it. 
It's like now it's like I would like it's it's Thursday night and I've got an event to go to and I go to the closet and it's like oh, okay this one's feeling a little snug and then it's like no ice cream tonight. So that that that's what kind of kept me in check were the suits. It kept yeah. me on. It kept me fit. Now I fell out the window and I and I gained the weight. There was a it was a Globe and Mail feature years ago with John Roberts, uh, formerly J D Roberts, who used to host the new music with Jeannie Becker yeah. before he went to the states and he worked at CBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was going to be the next Dan Rather. They went with Katie Carter. He ended up at CNN briefly, and now he's at Fox News. Okay. Don't um, hold it. But he did a whole story with the Globe and Mail about his fitness uh, routine. Yep. And uh, it was the same thing. He said uh, that he has too much money invested in his wardrobe, namely suits, uh, for him to, to gain weight. So that's what, um, you know, keeps him fit and going to the gym every time. So I, I kind of kind of relate. But yeah, I've worn a suit in the last uh, almost like in the last ten ten months. Okay. One suit. Well, um, you always look great, and I know you'll be back in those suits, no problem. <laughs> Honestly, this morning or today, I it was a reminder how to put on mascara because I was like, you know, my beauty regime for the last six months has been brushing my teeth. So. <laughs> well, wow, that's good. I read I read also something uh, from from uh, the dental industry that um, they're seeing patients with bad uh, uh, dental problems. Yeah. And I think it's COVID related. Like people aren't uh, keeping yeah, up. Or with eating. Food. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have one more question. What's the What's a good piece of fashion advice for men? What's your personal your go to message for men when they're getting dressed or when they're you know. Easy one uh, is is uh, wear uh, the correct size. Uh, yeah, yeah, simple. Like know your size and stick. Like wear something that fits well. Like uh, I, I used to do this when I was uh, much younger, just buy like an extra large T-shirt, even though a, a large is what I should be wearing. But I'm thinking that it's like more comfortable or what? Yeah, it, it doesn't make you look uh, slimmer or it, 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 like right. A nice if you're yeah. I don't know, just, and the same thing with suits. Like, I'd rather wear a nice tailored uh, $500 suit than a, a sloppy kind of un, unfitted uh, $4,000 suit or whatever, right? So yeah. it's like for menswear, um, fit. Fit is everything. Fit is perfect. It's true, like you, you don't have to break the bank uh, to look good, right? You can, you can buy a, a suit um, within your budget, but just get it tailored. In fact, yeah, yeah. Good. Right. Sure. When you look at when a lot of people are getting their fashion cues on Instagram, right? Such a visual social media platform, and a lot of those male, you know, fashion influencers that are crossing the intersection, or I mean, it, you can just see how how, how well fitted those those outfits yeah. are. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Glenn. I've no long how long you've been talking for, <laughs> but cheers. I hope to see you with a cocktail in my hand at a fancy party, maybe mask. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe the next time we can uh, uh, do this again and there'll be lots of customers in your yes. store. Yes, and I, I can't wait for um, you to come see the store one day too. Maybe we could do something fun here with everybody as well. It'll be really fun. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. Stay safe, okay? Stay well, yeah. and we'll see you, you soon. Okay?